thank you. Tim said, um, this is the best title slide he's ever seen, and I win, um, and no one can ever beat this. So this is um, Mission Impossible. First, I want to say thank you to our Backyard Natural subscribers who make this program possible. Um, and you yourself can become a Backyard Natural subscriber if you aren't already. Your subscription includes weekly lectures, a monthly field trip, um, and a subscriber appreciation party. Uh, seasonal and annual subscriptions will be available soon for season five, which is going to start in just a few weeks on September 1st. Um, so we'll send around um, links on how to sign up as soon as those become available, as well as an invitation to this year's subscriber appreciation party. But today we're going to be talking about the Virginia opossum. Um, we started season one with um, this animal and now we're revisiting it as we, we journey towards season five. Um, so I'll just give a little bit of an update, clear up some things that Tim may have misstated, um, but present mostly the same information. Um, the possum we're going to be talking about today is the Virginia opossum. It comes from the genus Didelphus, um, which are our American possums. And this includes um, seven different species, which primarily reside in um, South America, with the exception of one that kind of comes up into Central America. But our friend, the Virginia opossum, is only found in North America, um, primarily in the United States. And it is the only marsupial um, in North America, north of Mexico. Continuing with possum superlatives, it has the most teeth of any mammal um, in North America, with 50 teeth in that, that little jaw of, it, of its. Um, it also has the smallest brain to body size ratio of any mammal in North America. It's got a pretty small brain, pretty smooth brain. If you can kind of see its brain case back here and skull, kind of small. They're not the smartest, but they make up for that in their cuteness. Possums, sometimes you'll see a possum walking around like this, maybe looks pregnant. It's in fact not pregnant, but it's carrying babies. Possums are marsupials, meaning they have a pouch, um, and they're related to other marsupials that we may be more familiar with that primarily reside in Australia, um, including things like kangaroos and koalas and wombats. But our little friend the possum falls into that same grouping as well. Possums have a um, bifurcate reproductive system. So they have two uteri um, that they can give birth through. Um, their gestation is around 11 to 13 days. So a very short period of time. They'll give birth. Um, up to 20 little baby opossums might be born at one time, um, but only a handful of them will survive. So when they're born, they're super, super tiny and underdeveloped. And they have to travel to the mom's couch and find a nipple to latch onto, which they'll stay latched onto for roughly two and a half months. So when they're born, they're about the size of a dime um, or Wikipedia says they're about the size of a honeybee. Um, so super, super tiny, and they have to make this long journey to mom's pouch. Um, like I said, up to 20 can be born at one time, but a maximum of usually 11 to 14 will be able to find a nipple to attach to. Litters are usually about eight to nine um, little babies. They will spend two and a half months in their in the pouch where they'll do most of their development. Um, and then after that period, 
is when they will come out of the pouch and ride on mom's back for another two to four months. Um, they typically spend about 100 days with mom before going off on their own. Um, so when you see baby opossums, um, they might seem pretty small, but they're okay being out of the pouch as long as their their eyes are open. Um, they probably just got dislodged from mom. Possums are unique um, in that of for their size and their metabolic rate, they are probably one of the shortest lived mammals. Their average lifespan is roughly two years. Um, and that is due to things like them encountering roads or predators, but also just how their, their body works, how their evolution has um, shaped their lifespan. Uh, there's not a lot of pressure for them to live a long time. They have a lot of babies at once, um, eight to nine per litter, and they can have one to three litters per year. So really, they're born, they mature, they reproduce, they die. That's kind of how it goes. But they have a really, really great sense of smell, uh, not as, as good as something like uh, your domestic dog, um, but better than us or even things like mice. Um, and that is because of their very complex nasal cavity, which shown right here. Um, their eyesight is very, very poor, so they rely on this sense of smell um, to help them find food. And they eat just about anything. Um, they like fruits and vegetables. They like insects. They like carrion, um, eggs, mealworms, fish, pretty much anything, um, including garbage. Um, they really are scavengers um, more than predators, uh, so they'll pick up whatever they come across, which kind of brings us to this, this tick myth um, where it's been purported uh, over the last several years that possums are really, really great because they eat a ton of ticks. I, uh, five, about 5,000 per year. Um, this is not entirely true. Uh, while they will eat ticks, it's not super common for them to do that. They're really great groomers. Um, so it's kind of rare that you'll find ticks on them. Um, they usually clean themselves and end up eating those ticks. Um, but this myth comes from a study uh, that was put out by the Cary Institute, which is a, an institute um, that really got its start in studying tick ecology and Lyme disease ecology um, in upstate New York. Um, and they did an experimental study where they essentially put a possum in a box um, with tons of ticks and just watched it do whatever it would do with the ticks. And it ended up eating a bunch of them. Um, which if that was your only food source in your little box, then you would probably do the same. Um, but subsequent studies um, of them, observational studies more in their natural environment, um, of their diet and looking at diet items, show that they don't eat that many ticks. Um, since they are scavengers, they probably help out a little bit, but not as much as, as has been reported in the past. So continuing on with this idea of ticks and disease, um, opossums can carry diseases, like, including leptospirosis, tuberculosis, um, relapsing fever, tularemia, uh, spotted fever, toxoplasmosis, um, Chagas disease, and um, typhus. Um, so they, especially in urban environments, are, can be hosts for dog and cat fleas, which is kind of where this, this typhus comes from. 
Um, and this has been particularly a problem in Orange and Los Angeles counties in California, um, where there it's con it's of concern that the possums are perpetuating the typhus life cycle. Um, but in reality, it's not it's likely not possums alone um, that are helping to contribute to to typhus in this area um, as a host. But many other mammals are, have the ability to host these fleas and ticks and thus typhus and other diseases as well. Um, even in recent study, um, it ha has been found that they can track diseases, bacterial diseases like leptospirosis at very, very low rates. Um, so disease isn't a main concern when it comes to, to possums. Um, except if you live on a farm and have or have horses. Um, possums are the primary host for this um, coccidian parasite, Sarcocystis, um, and that can cause a lot of problems for horses in particular. Um, they are the final host, and then some other wildlife are the intermediate host. But when they shed these eggs, um, and the the coccidian parasite kind of it goes through its um, its life cycle, it can be ingested by horses, which can lead to a lot of problems, um, including death. Um, it can cause lesions in their spinal cord and brain. So it's really not good to have possums around your horses. Um, they're really great little animals, very cute, but keeping them off of property where horses graze is very important because of this, this parasite in particular. But for viral diseases, including things like rabies, um, it's been found that possum's body temperature is lower than than most other North American animals. Um, and so they're not very good carriers of rabies and they're really bad at transmitting rabies. Um, so, yes, <laughs> they're, they're not good at transmitting rabies. So that's not something that you need to be worried about, including other viral diseases. Um, viruses have a hard time surviving because of that low body temperature. Possums are primarily nocturnal, um, so they are mostly out doing their scavenging and living their little possum lives at night. Um, occasionally we'll see them during the day. Uh, that's not something unusual, but they are primarily nocturnal, which kind of brings us to Another myth um, that possums sleep um, upside down, hanging by their tail. In reality, possums like to, to den up in spaces during the daytime, um, in hollowed out trees, in trash cans, in people's attics or crawl spaces under their house, or even in a grill drawer, um, they'll find anywhere that's dark and cozy that they can den up during the day. Um, it's not necessarily consistent, a consistent place that they go back to um, time and time again, but they don't sleep hanging by their tail. But their tail, while they don't hang by their tail, their tail still is prehensile, meaning that they can use it essentially as a fifth limb. Um, they use this a lot to balance, um, while they climb or hold on to stuff, um, if they're falling, um, or if they want to carry some stuff back to their den, like this possum's doing with this bundle of leaves. Um, they like to make their their dens nice and cozy, so sometimes they'll use their prehensile tail to um, transport some material um, to create a little bed for themselves. Um, but their tail is hairless um, for the most part. Sometimes you'll get a few baby hairs. Um, 
but this makes them really susceptible to frostbite. And so in colder climates, parts of their tail, their ears, their hand, their fingers um, can become necrotic and, and fall off, which is why possums kind of look a little rough at times. Um, plus that um, very short lifespan, they, they age very quickly. Um, but they also have hairless feet um, and hands. Their feet are really interesting because they have this thumb on their back feet, um, which is more or less uh, an opposable thumb, um, not, not necessarily in the sense that, that we have opposable thumbs, but it is used to grip things. Um, but because of this hairlessness, they really don't like the cold. Um, so they're rarely found um, in northern climates. Um, they're kind of only found pretty much um, along the border of the U.S. and Canada, not really anywhere up north. But that doesn't mean they don't make their way up that way. Uh, recently, uh, a possum hitched a ride in a shipping container up to Homer, Alaska, um, and this started a giant opossum hunt um, to find this possum who was nicknamed Grubby by the people of Homer, um, as possums technically are an invasive species in that area. They wanted to make sure she was captured um, and sent to a safe space. Um, she was eventually taken into custody and she now lives at the Anchorage Zoo in Alaska, but not before dropping off some of her babies. Um, it's unclear how many babies <laughs> she left behind. Um, they've found up to five so far. All of them have been sent to the Alaska Zoo, um, and there still may be more out there that they're trying to round up. So possums. We've talked a lot about possums, but what about uh, what to do if you encounter a possum? Possums look pretty pretty scary uh, with those 50 teeth that they have, and they often gape their mouth like this um, when they feel threatened. Um, but it's very rare that a possum will bite you or even hiss at you um, if you approach it. And if they were to bite you, their bite strength is one of the lowest of all mammals. So all those teeth don't really do a whole lot. Um, they're kind of just for show um, and for chewing up all the gross stuff that they eat. But their bite force is very, very uh, minimal compared to even our, our own bite force. Um, so they wouldn't do much damage if they were to bite you. But it's, it's very rare that they even bite to begin with. They have a whole host of predators from things like coyotes to bobcats, mountain lions, owls, raptors, um, humans, roads. Um, so how, if they don't bite, they don't hiss, what do they do? They're not very fast either. Um, so they don't often just run away. Instead, <clears throat> they play dead. And this is kind of just a reflex for them. When they feel frightened, they kind of just, they'll gape their mouth, keel over, and just play dead. They'll also excrete their, their the musk from their anal glands to make them smell really gross and uh, like they're dead. Um, but if you leave them alone, they'll just hop right back on up and waddle away. Another line of defense that possums have is this thing called self-anointing, um, which is more seen on, on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, this is when they'll take a scent and use their saliva to pick up the scent and then redistribute it on their body. This is a really common behavior um, across the animal kingdom, but particularly in um, hedgehogs and some other rodents. Um, but possums have been found to do this behavior as well. Um, and this is kind of a way to mask their own scent um, from predators. 
on the, the other hand, they'll do this behavior called slubbing, which is where they'll take their saliva and rub it all over something they like, whether that's a human or a cardboard box. So they get their scent all over it and tell other animals and particularly possums that this is mine. Something that's not a myth is that possums are are not necessarily immune, but um, they're not as susceptible to rattlesnake venom. Um, so a possum, a, a rattlesnake would have to bite a possum about um, eighty times before the possum would be affected by its venom, um, and that's unlikely to happen because. Snakes, when they bite, they deplete their venom stores, and a possum, it's rare that a possum would stick around long enough to be bit 80 times. Um, but because of this um, lowered susceptibility to the venom, they've been used a lot in study um, for potential sources of anti-venom for rattlesnakes in particular. Um, and it was found that they have a very specific peptide that uh, they produce in their blood that neutralizes rattlesnake venom. So there's a lot of potential for this discovery to be used in the development of anti-venom because anti-venom is, as it, as it stands currently, is very expensive. It's about $2,000 a vial. Um, and that um, can only be distributed to about 10 people at a time. Mm -hmm. Something that Tim mentioned in the original possum is this word opossum or possum come from this Hawaiian word that means white animal. Um, it was kind of westernized and now is used to describe possums both um, in the Americas as well as in Australia. It's more common that the possums in Australia are called possums, whereas opossums um, in the Americas are, are called opossum with the O, but colloquially known as possums. And possums came here during the great uh, American interchange, which was this, this mass movement of various mammals between North America and South America. So the ancestor of our Virginia opossum came to um, the East Coast during that time and has kind of spread since then. Ha but they, they weren't originally native to the West Coast. Um, instead, they were they were brought over there. Um, it is thought they were brought during the Great Depression and it's thought that they were brought over to the West Coast because they were an easy food source. Um, since they're not very great running away, they don't bite, um, they're pretty easy to just kind of scoop up and bring home for dinner. And so possum has, it's still culturally important as a food source for some people, but it's kind of fallen by the wayside for most. Um, and people are turning to possums as these cute animals that help out our backyards and maybe even have them as pets. Um, this is Billy the opossum that Herbert Hoover um, kept as a pet at the White House. Um, and today many people keep opossums as pets. I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, while they're very cute, they are still wild animals. Um, they have not in any way been domesticated. Um, their lifespan is pretty much too short for that um, and they don't make great pets because of that that short lifespan and because they require um, a very varied diet that has a lot of nutritional requirements um, and if those requirements aren't met they can develop um, nutritional deficiencies which is what causes this eye bulging that you'll see in in a lot of uh, captive opossums. Possums have also made their way to internet culture and are 
beloved across the internet um, because of, of their general cuteness, their weird facial expressions, um, their general relatableness, um, and of course, they're, they're just cute little faces. Um, but all in all, possums are super helpful um, in our environment as um, scavengers. Um, they clean up a lot of stuff out in our environment along with many other animals. Um, of course, they don't eat nearly as many ticks as we thought, so they're not necessarily important in that way, but they're still important in our ecosystems. Um, and so possums go out and find a possum to celebrate in your backyard. Um, they're really great little animals and they don't live very long, so, and they won't really bother you. Uh, maybe just, just play dead. Um, so that's all I've got for possums and we can, uh, 